Hello, welcome back to Sage Nail TV, where we analyze everything that has to do with women, life issues, challenges, relationship, marriage, culture, national issues, politics, and everything that would help and is happening in the woman's life. We take on the analysis here on this channel, bringing out solutions that we can begin to apply in our own lives and community to make the world a better place. So here at Signal TV, we do not just discuss matters because it is trending. We analyze it to bring out solutions that we can immediately do and utilize in our lives, of course, to produce a better result from the lessons that we are learning today i want to speak about and analyze a very important conversation it's a tweet three is a twitter is a twitter three is <laughs> a twitter thread that has been yeah trending for a while trending is relative depending on who on what it is that you are paying attention to but for what I pay attention to, especially here in this channel, what we address, this is something that is trending and is important to actually address. So I will just go on to read out the Twitter thread and then we will dive into it. Okay, when I read it out, then we will talk about it, analyze it, pick out the story, and of course conclude this particular episode this is a good time to subscribe if you haven't because i guarantee you you are going to enjoy this video till the end plus some you're going to get some more get to click on some other videos after you watch this one the person who tweeted this tweet by the way is not the original owner of this story the person just tweeted it so it is important to note so that you know you're not going to the person's timeline thinking oh my god is this person's particular is this person who's why that did it to him no this person just tweeted about it and we are grateful that he did because it helps us to when issues like this happen it's not just oh god this happened in this person's life oh what what can we no is is what it, it teaches us what is happening it also shows, it also helps those who are in that particular phase to adjust quickly so that they do not get into challenges that a current story is actually showing. My wife's salary was a mystery until I discovered how much she's truly worth. In 2016, she told me her salary was 950 Ghana CDs. And then two years later, when she got promoted, I asked about her salary and she said, oh, these people don't mind them. They added only 350 Ghana CDs to my old salary because of a mega salary. I've actually, I've taken up so many responsibility in the house without complaint. I pay for utilities and pay for food. I pay for the fees of our two kids, clothe them and take care of their medical bills. When my wife sends me a grocery list, she adds sanitary pads. She buys dresses and clothes, comes to show them to me, and asks me to pay for them. She started talking about a car when our second child came in. Things weren't good on my side, so I asked her to give me some time. She said, I've saved something. I can add it to what you have, so you pay me when your money comes. I agreed and took that money from her, topped it up to get high car for three months my years never rested she would wake up at dawn and ask me to pay what i owe her i got tired and paid the money when i didn't have much in my account one evening i turned my laptop on and saw a lot of emails i checked and it was my wife's email that had been opened i asked her did you use my laptop she answered yeah i was checking something I told her, then you didn't log out. She answered, I forgot. Please log out for me. I was about to log out when something caught my attention. I saw a mail with the subject, January paid slip. I opened and started going through. When I saw a gross salary, I was shocked. 4,734 Ghana CDs and this girl has been crying poverty. I went through the details that night. I couldn't sleep. I was angry. I felt let down. I felt cheated. I felt played. 
We've been married for six good years and my wife earned that much without my knowledge. How much she did. She, how much she earned didn't bother me a lot than what she was using that money for. I decided not to talk immediately, but rather do a little bit of investigation. All my life, I have held the view that it wasn't right for anyone to go through their partner's phone. It is an invasion of privacy and it breeds mistrust in the relationship. But that night, going through her phone was the only way to find out what I was looking for. I started with our best friend. Nothing much was found. Our family had a WhatsApp group. I read the messages. I got a few hints. I went through the chats with her father and that was when I realized my wife had bought a piece of land and had started building. Our father was in charge of the project. He had sent photos of the various stages of the building and at some point, our father said, thank you for helping out your brother. He would have been home had it not been you. She has only one brother, a senior brother. I went to look for the chat between them. A senior brother lost his job and was home doing nothing. So my wife bought her a yonder I-10 to use, bought him, what he most likely said, wanted to say, bought him a yonder I-10 to use for Uber. Every week, her brother rendered an account and they split the money. From all indications, my wife was doing well for herself while she plays poor so she could rely on my salary. Why would she do that? I thought I was being a supportive husband so my wife could be proud of me, could be proud of the, this has been cut off, okay? When we bought land, it was in a name and my name that appeared on that land title. Mm -hmm. It was a name and my name that appeared on that land title. That car I bought for her with a loan from her bears her name. I didn't mind. I believed what was hers was also mine. The next morning she realized I wasn't looking well. I was boiling on the inside but looking for a good opportunity to start the conversation. When I calmed down a little bit, I asked her, why would you do that to me? She asked, what have I done? I answered, you bought land, you never told me. You started building on it, you never told me when you are going to, when are you going to tell me? She was shocked. She asked, who told you all that? I said, your father did. She stood quiet for a while. She asked, why would my father tell you all that? Where were you people talking about? I said, I don't know. You can ask him. She left it there. Some minutes later, she came back to me with her phone. Her father wants to talk to you. My father wants to talk to you, she said. The phone was already on loudspeaker. His voice was clearly angry. He asked, almost shouting, you said, I, you told, you said, I told you my daughter has a beauty. Where did I say that and when? I asked, is it not true that my wife has a building project going on that you are supervising? He asked me, I told you that. I asked, is it true or not? After the back and forth, I told them I read your messages last night. I saw the pictures. I read the various budgets you had sent to my wife. I read the confirmation of the money receipts and you, that you sent her. You are a man. Would you be happy? If that is what, if your wife does this to you, he started fumbling. He started apologizing. He thought, he, he said, he thought, saying, he thought I was aware. My wife stood there motionless, didn't know what to do. When her father hung up, I told her everything I knew from my salary to the car she bought for her brother. I said, yes, even, you, even your sanitary pad, I buy them. You think I am a fool? You use your money to acquire your own properties and live on mine because you are my wife. I hear, we'll see. Trust was lost. Love was broken. We had to find a new way of living our lives going forward. Our father called me every morning, morning and evening, apologizing for everything and sometimes taking up the blame so I didn't have to blame his daughter. I told him. The emotional state I'm in right now, it will be hard to think straight or think forgiveness. Just give me space. Three days later, they were in our house. The father, the mother, the senior brother, they came apologizing. Don't let this break up the beautiful marriage you both have. If nothing at all, consider the kids and be lenient in your judgment. 
I listened to them. My position was still the same. I need time to clear my mind. Just leave me alone to think. From last month to this month that I'm writing this, my wife had changed totally. She doesn't ask for money, but the house is being run smoothly. She has started paying for things she never paid for, but that doesn't move me. She has taught me a very great lesson, and I'm taking it seriously. That in everything, I have to look out for myself and my family first. Last, she told me, if you want us to change the names on those properties, we can do so. Guess whose name is on our property? Our father's name. I told her, you don't need to change it. You've suffered for them, so you can decide what you want to do with them. The land I bought has our names. I'm selling it and taking my money back. The car she's driving has her name. I put it up for I put a for sale sticker on it some weeks ago. She agreed she'll pay for the car. I've given her two months to pay up or I sell it and take my money. She started, she's getting the message, and I'm glad. Each each one for himself, God for us all. She keeps asking if I'm going to leave her. I keep telling her I won't, but if she wants a divorce, I would gladly give her. I'm not going to leave the marriage. I will give her some time to heal and see what may happen. But when it comes to money, I've taken the lessons that she taught me through our actions, the end. It was important that I read through it. I could have said, oh, just go through the screenshot or just do this or just do that. But no, I wanted you to actually hear it being read out. Honestly speaking, of course, if you follow through listening, especially really listening, you see that this is quite sad. This is quite unfortunate. And the truth about this thing, and especially as a counselor, is that we usually do not know the full story. So if a person comes out to put out a story, especially from a counselor point of view, it's not always the full story that there is to that particular situation. That is the truth. It's actually never always the true story. Full, full, full story. We're not saying it's not true. We're saying full story. Okay. But if we're going to analyze this, I say this is what we have because we don't even, this particular person just tweeted it on behalf of this person um, to spread the message or at least to share some lessons, which I think is good. But I think is good. We will see that. I do hope, I hope that they were the wife, yeah, I hope that that's something that can happen. Now that the story is out, maybe the husband and wife, or the wife can come to say some things to, to this. Because when I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what will make the woman? They were in their marriage, apparently, from what was shared and the behavior of the wife after what it, after, after she was confronted with what she did, is one who is remorseful and is trying to right her wrong. But I'm wondering, this is a man that seemingly was supportive all the while financially so what would have made her start behaving the way that she was behaving there are a couple of things i can think of and one of the things are orientations that women get and that's why it is important in this work day and age to be very careful of the kind of things that you are lying sipping in and slipping into sleeping and sinking rather into your belief system because you know things like Oh, hey, be careful. Hmm. You better do your own. Your husband, nobody says you should not do your own or you should do work. I mean, from the story, the woman was already working. So it's not like anybody closed that in a cage. But then when you come together in a marriage, that trust, which is a very important and foundational ingredient for marriage, is very important. And the trust requires a lot of things. It's not enough to say trust or it's not enough to, because people think to just say, oh, I'm not cheating on him with another guy or with another woman. That's not the end. That's not all there is to marriage. In some comment section that I was seeing of some people reading this, you know, some people are like, oh, she cheated with him with your finance. Exactly. Because cheating is when you go to a man or you go to a woman. So when it comes to this trust, it's not only sexual relations with, you know, adultery. There's a, <laughs> there's a whole curriculum when it comes to this whole trust thing. And apparently the wife started, yeah, the wife breached the trust. I want to believe as a result of some as a result of some orientation that started slipping into her mind. Now, where she was getting this orientation from, we don't know because I don't know her personally. I neither at this time of recording this video, neither she come out to say, oh, this is where I got orientation or not. But here's the thing, and I've addressed this in some previous videos. 
you mm -hmm. why you listen to you know you, you if you do not rebuke immediately you begin to allow build up in your belief system and then your thoughts become things okay so if you begin to consider so the thoughts process in a rough form this is how it is you listen to something now there are two things you can do when you listen to a thing you start to analyze it in your mind to check and to investigate it to see is it true that's what you start to do first of all is it true so you are starting out with that is it true or you rebuke it and you don't even take it so checking out is it true if you do not investigate to actually check is it true and follow through with that particular thought process what will happen is that automatically what you're saying is it true but you haven't actively investigated if it's true would that slip into your belief system and before you know consciously you hear another person talk about it again you hear another person talk about it again and in this day and age sometimes because a person does something consistently or says something consistent some people might take it as truth when whereas you're supposed to actually do your own investigation so what happens is that some people take consistent talking or consistent hammering of a particular subject as truth and begin to act on it when in fact sometimes it is a lie what am i trying to say and i'm trying to let's even well from this story using this story as a case study but just speaking generally we must be very 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 guarded and guided about how we go through our marital journey in this woke generation the author and originator and founder of marriage is god so we must make sure that in all our getting we should make sure that we're getting understanding from the one who actually originated this institution if not you're going to be getting things wrong i'm telling you you're going to be getting things wrong there are a lot of things out there with people well dressed that look like they're speaking truth but the truth is because a person is so eloquent and because a person is well dressed doesn't mean that they're speaking truth you must have a discerning heart somebody put it rightly that quoted that recently so i do not think from what i'm checking through in the analysis of this particular story i do not think that if the wife started out with oh i want to i want to be stingy because truly truly she started with a meager salary just like the husband actually shared but something happened along the along the way and she was like mm, should i tell him should i not tell him and in fact I don't know if at the time she was reporting a salary increase to the husband she was already lying that's a serious problem in marriage you don't want to do that mm, you don't want to do that you don't you don't want to do that so like i said some sort of orientation must have happened and i don't know what happened i don't know what the man did or did not do what she did. maybe the man did something she didn't like we don't know we don't know what happened but the truth is your attitude and actions are your responsibility it applies in marriage too you can't say because somebody did this I've, i watch a lot of crime true crime stories the judge is going to say oh he also gave you a slap so you killed him don't worry just quickly leave the prison you will go to jail you will go to jail that's why you must be responsible for your actions and you must be responsible for the decisions and commitments and dedications that you get into so the truth is you no matter what you try to say we don't know what the man did it's true rightly so the wife still is responsible for her own actions do you get it and that also um, says um, same thing to the man as well. Now the man is already putting out, he says something like me and my family. When I was reading that, first of all, before I chose to bring out this story, I'm bringing this story to you here. I was thinking the me and my family was talking about was him and his wife. I don't know. They didn't talk about children. I'm not sure they spoke about children or maybe children. Anyways, but it wasn't really mentioned here in this week. Well, I can't remember that it was at least reading through. But let's say him and the wife. I was thinking he, I was thinking he was actually talking about him, his immediate family. I didn't know when he said I am. Um, if you remember that part where you're like, ah, I'm going to look out for myself and my family. He was talking about him and his family that is coming from and of course the man doesn't need that the truth is what has been done is hurtful but the truth is in marriage you're going to be hurt a lot you're going to be hurt a lot that is why as a single person it's very important that you 
already are cultivating the attitude of forgiveness. There's some people that already say, ah, me and we're real. Hey, me, don't try. You you want to carry the attitude to marriage? And so there are some other people, they can't stay through things. They don't have staying power. They want to get married. Just want you get married to where? To who? To what? What, what are you getting? You've not even finished working on all that. Are you going to be working out on everything that happens in your life? Or are you going to be saying, I'm mad? Or will you be keeping malice? You know all those very babyish, dramatic things. Those are things that are important to build up in your single day so that in marriage you're just slipping through. So now the man too has his own, he gets his own property. And yes, it is true that he has been hot. But what they need to do right now is not to start selling car, start selling. If you want to say, oh, begin to help out, what they need, of course, is a new plan. They need a new plan and they need to reconcile anything that they can. So if they need to change a person's document to the family name or whatnot, all those things need to be done. There's nothing like, I don't know, mind your business. It shows that it's still hot. And he said it rightly so. So what they need, the next step they need to take, first of all, they even need to pray and go back to the author and originator and founder of marriage. That is first things first. Secondly, they need to, because it's clearly obvious that they can't handle these things themselves. Mm-hmm. They can't, and I do not know the reason why the man posted this publicly, but it may be part of the reason, it may be part of the fact that maybe he's trying to heal, or he just wanted to share this story because it's something he cannot handle himself at this time. So they also need to work through a therapy session with a counselor and therapy that has, uh, and a therapist that has their best interest at heart. Do you understand? That is another thing that they actually need to, they actually need to even, consider as well that's another thing that they need to consider they need to consider because this is this is a it's, it's like a bridge it's like a bridge or a gallop in their marriage they need they need a lot of feeling for them to be able to move to the next phase so that somebody doesn't fall off because you see the man is making sense like oh me i don't know if you don't want me i won't divorce you but if you want to divorce it it means th that sense carries a lot of things it means well, from now on we're going to do a lot of things and we are not going to care and we don't want a marriage to turn into a living in a house affair what does that mean everybody do your thing if you want to sleep with a woman if you want to sleep with a man we don't i mean we see it time by time and again and how people turn their marriages into those kind of things because they are not intentional about resolving the particular problems and challenges that they have okay so yeah that is, those are important tips and those are things that if you yourself are going through at this particular time, you should actually learn from these lessons and see how to apply it in your life. Finally, I will say, like I always like to share to singles, let us continue to beef up and upgrade our trust system. Yes, I'm going to call it trust system. A lot of the things that people project in marriage are things they are already projecting privately with their co-workers, with their team workers, with their friends. Any small thing, they are already very fearful. Yes, don't give yourself the opportunity to be abused by people. Abuse doesn't mean slap or beating, but like, you know, continue to take you for a fool. But at the same time, you must be... I saw a video one time that I would never forget, a very short video but made a lot of sense yes the video made a lot of sense I'm, I'm going to attach it yes i would attach it to this so that you can see what the man said i love it so much so totally good the man was saying that hmm, at the end of the day it has everything to, I, I mean, the man will say it you know in a better version because it's the one that said it but it was saying something about when it comes to being expectations of people being hurt by people or whatnot, it has everything to do with you and nothing to do with them. You are the one to build your expectations. You are the one to mold your expectations. You are the one to know, uh, prepare in advance for forgiveness. You are the one to build your attitude. You are the one to basically, in all ramification, work on yourself so that if anything is done, it's not always all about them, them, them. It's not always going to be all about them. Um, finger pointing but it's going to be about you and how you take it with your maturity okay so maturity again because i've heard again there's another conversation but maturity sometimes doesn't mean oh just keep quiet you can address it but at the same time you have to abuse yourself in such a way that hurts is not something that will paralyze you it takes a lot of training my dear brothers and sisters it takes a lot of training but you must 
you must it's something that we must all do and yeah the pretty much is like oh lower your expectations of people lower your expectation of people doesn't mean think the worst of people mm. doesn't mean think the worst of people but it means understand that a human being will never they were not built to satisfy you and they're not going to satisfy you and also prepare that hey people will hurt you unintentionally as well yes they are the ones that will do it unintentionally well I mean, too bad for them. But the ones, that, what about the ones that do it unintentionally? Give allowance for them, so that your heart is not clogged full with, you know, peace, with pins and darts of, you know, hurts that people have <laughs> hurt you with in such a way that you are not healing, but rather you are bleeding. Let me know what you think in the comment section concerning this. I hope that you've been able to pick out important lessons with just everything that we've discussed and analyzed today. Watch out. For future videos, if you've not subscribed, this is the best time to subscribe. Of course, share this video with at least two friends, two friends, two friends, two friends, two friends, two friends. You know how we do it. Of course, do not forget to share your comments. Like this video. When you like this video, at the very least, it helps to help to help more people see this content and of course if you've been blessed by this content don't you want other people to be blessed as well my name is Sydney and there are important links in the description for you one important link to that I'm sorry about that I'm releasing a book that I'm give, going to give out for free when we hit one five subscribers yes you heard it okay 50 places a woman can be found by the man of her dreams that book is loaded is the the book is lo literally loaded honestly speaking we are running fast like a friend there was a friend and a sister that shared you know about this youtube to seven seven of our friends because you know we want the process to be faster once we hit one five there's no story night day morning noon whatever we're going to you're going to get the book because you know it's set it's ready it's prepared for you and you can check out the link in the description to learn more about what this book will have to offer you but we're on our journey to one five subscribers at the time that you're watching this video so let's make it happen so that we can celebrate together because after all your success is my success my success is your success and together we will keep growing to make our country nation and world great i will see you in the next video you can see me in previous videos you haven't watched my name is sedinel thank you for spending time with me today